Hey everyone, Robert here, author of Expansion Mastery, The Practical Guide to Living a Fully Engaged Life. Are you ready to start living your life to the fullest, even though this quarantine and lockdown continues? Then you've come to the right place, my friends. Welcome to The Fully Engaged Life. Welcome back to the show, everyone. In the previous episode, I brought up the concept of perception and how there are two primary prevailing perceptions uh, in regards to how people are reacting to this quarantine and lockdown. What I wanted to do was take this opportunity to expand upon the idea of perception. And in this particular episode, I'm not going to go too deeply into the philosophical or spiritual nature of perception. Instead, what I'm going to do is share with you and try my best to explain the three primary types of perception that are out there amongst humanity right now. And yes, I know there's all kinds of varying degrees to each one of these, but over years of observation... I've been able to put these into these three categories. And understanding these categories is going to help you understand a little bit of what's going on in the world and hopefully help you protect your sense of humanity and mental health. The question is, do I feel this is necessary at this point in time? I feel this is very necessary at this point of time. So the answer is yes. And just like I am having friends and family and students of whom I have warned years ago that something like this was coming and explained to them how to prepare. And just like over 270 different episodes and in my book, I explained how important meditation was for our mental health, how important movement was, such as Tai Chi or Qigong, how important that is for our physical and energetic health, and how important it is to be engaging in various physical exercises for our physical health, how to keep our immune system healthy. As I have pleaded with people to prepare and protect themselves. So what I would like to do today is to cover the mental aspect of humanity that I have observed up to this point in time. And I even did a self-check to make sure that I wasn't seeing this with a skewed sense of perception and that my observations were based upon a sense of open-minded acceptance for the way things are free of my own bias. This is a very important program, and I really hope you listen all the way through and take what I'm about to share to heart. So first, let's understand perception, because this is a very deep subject. It's basically how we view the world around us. It shapes our beliefs, and at the same time creates our view of reality and the life we live. It's quite literally our ability to become aware of and understand the world around us through our physical senses. It's how we interpret things. What I discuss here in this episode should make for an incredibly strong case regarding the importance of practicing meditation on a regular basis. The practices within the Expansion Mastery Program, various Spiritual practices, such as meditative practices and meditation itself, are all designed to help the practitioner to develop what's referred to as pure perception. Okay, The word pure here means that it is without the bias of the ego, without the foregone conclusions that take place through the subconscious mind's sensory filters and without emotional attachment. This is certainly no small task. 
And is it really necessary? If you are going to see clearly, if you are going to be awakened, it is incredibly necessary. So as I continue this episode, please keep in mind those three aspects that can corrupt our sense of perception. The bias of the ego, the foregone conclusions of the sensory filters of the subconscious mind, and emotional attachment. Because you will see how these things relate to perception and whether it is pure or tainted. As I stated in the previous podcast, there are two primary types of perception that are prevalent right now, especially in the U.S., but probably in most of the world. And what I'm going to do today is to expand upon that for you and help you understand exactly what those perceptions are, but also let you see that there is another option. There are actually three pervading perceptions. It's just the first one I'm going to address is incredibly rare. Now, just to be clear, what I'm stating here is not merely my opinion or my perception. Believe me, I always double check and triple check myself to make sure that I'm not simply imposing my own perception upon anyone else. If you look objectively, if you listen to people, if you're capable of accepting the way things are, these states of perception that are prevalent right now are glaringly obvious. However, when speaking to people who hold these types of perception, they have no idea that they are in one of these categories. And that's one of the things that makes this very concerning, if not dangerous. Okay, so let's get to it. The first sense of perception that I'm referring to, this is the rare one. This is the one that people have who are on the path of awakening or who have, to some degree, whatever degree, have awakened. The ones who have successfully engaged specific spiritual practices that have allowed them to attain pure perception. Now, that doesn't mean that it's perfect they're striving for that, but at least they're able to have some sense of pure perception. And remember that that pure perception means that you've transcended your own opinions and views. They're pure because your views are no longer formed because as you experience something, you simply experience it and you let it go. So there is no attachment to them. There's no emotional strings being created with this, and it is not being observed out of ego. This is a sense of perception that is made capable by no longer falling for the illusions of life. You can see things as they are. You can see through the grand illusions. Likewise, your perception is no longer falling victim to your own ego created mental delusions. Imagine it. If you could have an experience where you just have the experience, you're in a state of pure experiencing. There's no judgment. There's no criticism. There's no emotional attachment to the experience or the outcome of that experience. Because Usually, whenever we take in information from our physical senses and is processed through the mind, the subconscious mind kicks up some filters, right? Puts it through uh, past stored knowledge and images and beliefs and so on and so forth. And that creates a sense of bias uh, upon our perception, which is not pure perception. That is what's meant by tainted, right? Another example of it. And most people cannot fathom what it would be like to simply be and simply experience without those things happening because they happen unconsciously. People don't even realize that they are happening because they happen instantaneously. But in this 
state of awakening that I'm speaking of, you are able to step outside of that. You're able to suspend those mental processes. You're able to transcend the ego. You're able to escape all of these normal human mental traps that skew our perception of reality. People who have attained this pure perception, to whatever degree that is, generally have a very open mind. They're very content experiencing reality as it is instead of the way they believe it is or the way they want to force it to be. This doesn't mean they're simple pacifists who don't ever participate in important events or enjoy the emotional nature of things, but they do so without mental or emotional attachment to the experience or the outcome. That's a big difference. So no, this does not make you an emotional zombie or something like that. It doesn't make you cold as a person. Just the opposite. When you are able to actually experience things without all of this other stuff getting in the way, life gets to be an incredible experience, a wonderful, intense adventure. These people have a tendency to be very calm, very centered, very relaxed. They have no desire for the drama of most of life's experiences. This is the type of state that we are striving to achieve in spiritual practices. This is one of the goals. And in so doing, you protect your mental health on a level that is unsurpassed. All right, now let's go into the second type of perception. This is a typical perception where people see things through the eyes of duality. This is the normal state of humanity, okay? They see things through the eyes of duality, good and bad, right and wrong, so on and so forth. Generally, they'll gravitate towards being positive or negative as their base perception. And as we know, for some reason, the human mind is biased towards a negative. It's unfortunate, but it's a fact. And so we know that a lot of people like the drama, like the negativity. But we also know these people who are just naturally positive people, don't we? So it's up to each of us, and it could be that we developed a perception swaying to one end or the other because of life circumstances, or it could be just the way we came wired. But these people view the world in one of two ways. Either that uh, the universe is uh, stacked against me and everybody's out to get me, or the universe is working for my favor and everybody's helping me to have a wonderful life experience. Most of the time, these people are basically down-to-earth, sensible people living their lives. Sure, their perception is still skewed by emotional attachment, unconscious mental processes, and of course, the ego. But at least their perception could be considered as somewhat rational. They are able to think critically, which helps their perception. And remember, just because the mind is still dominated by the ego doesn't mean that you're a bad person necessarily. That's just the normal state of the human mind that has not undergone practices designed to dissolve the ego. Therefore, the perception will always be skewed by the ego. There's no way around it until you have engaged practices and successfully dissolved it. Those people of this perception act in one of two ways. Either they can't help themselves and try to force their views onto someone else, or they keep their views completely to themselves. However, because they are still emotionally attached to every experience, to everything that the senses bring in, they have a tendency to ride the emotional roller coaster of ups and downs, sometimes positive and sometimes negative, usually fluctuating wildly throughout every single day. 
Something they perceive as good happens to them, so they go up. Something that happens that they perceive as bad, it goes down. Somebody tells them they're good looking, so it goes up. Somebody else tells them they're not good looking, so it goes down. See what I'm saying? Ups and downs, ups and downs. And I have shared practices with this to help you discover just how incredibly frequent this happens. Those of this type of perception usually have open minds regarding certain things, but can be a bit more closed-minded when it comes to beliefs that they have formed. It is this second group, this is the average, the normal type of group and group perception. This is where people start. And for the vast majority of people, this is where they will spend their entire lifetime without ever realizing there is a way to escape this and to find uh, something better, a, a better state of mind that allows for pure perception. And now, today, we also have another direction we can go. And this has not been so prominent in the past. It has been my observation that it's been the past three to five years that this type of perception has grown tremendously. And this is not the direction we want our minds to go. This is not the direction of a healthy mind. This is the perception of a mind that has become warped in some way to some degree. And that's why I'm sharing this, because I want to caution you to make sure that you don't allow yourself to go down this particular mental path. And I'm sure you're going to know people in your life who have, and hopefully there is some way we can help them to not only get back to middle ground, uh, the middle path of perception or the normal, the average, but then to even go farther and exceed that into uh, the area of pure perception. Okay, so let's get into this one. People who hold this type of perception usually still have a strong sense of duality. However, it's very different than in the second group, whereas the second group kind of fluctuates gently throughout the day, dependent upon external conditions or their base demeanor, which could be either positive or negative. But those in this third group, their sense of duality has been twisted. So they don't want it this way or that way, either extreme, right? The whole idea about duality is, is extremes. You, you're either um, this extreme or that extreme. You're either good or you're bad. There's no middle ground. So these people want both extremes at the same time. And we understand that this is an impossibility, but this is one of the things they want. They want it both ways, and they want it right now. This sort of perception is extremely impatient, and that sense of impatience and that sense of wanting it both ways, their way, speaks to something I've been warning about for years, and that is when the ego becomes inflated to an unsustainable level. This is the result. This is what you get. So these people, and why this is twisted is because these people live in a world of duality, a world of extremes, but they want both extremes at the exact same time. And even though they live in a world of duality, there is only their view, and any other view is unacceptable. And when confronted with another person's view, they not only become frightened and instantly angry. This type of perception sees that its point of view, its opinion, its perception must be defended at all costs. And they do so rather passionately, even violently. And from this comes the belief that whatever they feel or want, whatever their opinion is, is the right way 
And that's the way reality should be, and they cannot comprehend why it will not be that way. So they do everything in their power to force it. If that doesn't happen, if they're unable to force their perception, they lose it. These people have a tendency to value their own opinion more than facts, logic, and of course, common sense. The people of this perception can't help but to attempt to force their views on everyone else, and if they're rejected, they get extremely agitated, believing that anyone not sharing their views doesn't even have the right to live. In this state, with such a highly inflated ego, the mind becomes extremely fragile. So this is where we get into this twisted nature of this is because people who are falling into this type of perception want both extremes. They want everything their way and they want it now and they want it all the time. And then the problem is they keep changing what their way is. As soon as they get their way or they perceive they have gotten their way, they instantly change it to something else. So it has the appearance as though they're just never satisfied with anything at all. And again, that is the nature of what is happening. So here's an example of what I mean by this to put it into some perspective for you. If I am a manager of a business and I have people working for me that I oversee, let's say that some of these workers have this type of uh, skewed perception. Okay, so they have this type of perception and they're always complaining that they're not feeling supported um, and they need additional workers to be called in to help them out because they're too taxed. They're not supported. They feel unappreciated and so on and so forth. We have to understand that when people of this perception claim that they feel unsupported or they feel uh, unappreciated or whatever it is, that is their way of leveraging the situation to get what they want. Okay, So the situation may not even call for them having more help, but in their minds, they feel they should be able to do that and be able to do less than they normally do. So they throw a fit. Now, as a manager, I have to answer to those above me and follow certain rules and guidelines that have been put into place as well as state and local laws, right? So there's only so much I can do. But let's say in this instance that I go to those folks above me and I rally for uh, some extra help. And as soon as I do that, as soon as I get the approval for that and I get some extra help in, these new people or the additional people are no more than stepping foot on the the floor. And the same people who were complaining that they wanted more help brought in are now complaining that they don't want these people in their way, that these people aren't trained good enough. They don't want to have to help them. They don't want to see what I'm saying. They want it both ways at the same time. And that is not congruent with reality. And as a manager, that leaves me stuck between a rock and a hard place because I am unable to satisfy this group with this perception, because as soon as they get their way, which is perceived as having two different opposing situations happen for them at the same time, then they end up changing what it is they want again. And this is a never ending cycle. It's like a a dog chasing its tail. The mind is just spinning around and around and around. As soon as they get what they want, They don't want it. They want something else. And it's usually just the opposite of what they had been asking for. And for me as a manager, then, if I am not of that point of view, if I'm not of that type of perception, then I'm trying my best to support the workers. I'm trying to do what's best for the company and do what's expected of me. And this leaves me very frustrated and in a place where no matter what I do, Nobody's happy. There's no pleasing anyone. The people who hold this sort of warped, inverted perception 
are never pleased. And it's extremely sad because these people must go through life in a constant state of frustration and unhappiness. And then as the ego continues to inflate and people of this type of perception continue to have their perception inverted or twisted, then what we're left with is people licking toilet seats, grocery items, coughing and spitting on gas pump nozzles in order to spread a virus. Those people become consumed with a burning hatred for anyone that has a differing viewpoint of theirs or anyone who they perceive is outside of someone who agrees with them. These are the same unfortunate people whose perception has led them to believe that there are more than two genders, that communism is peaceful and a good idea, and all the other forms of things that we consider to be somewhat insane that we are constantly hearing about. These people lack rational thought in favor of delusional and inverted logic. These are the people mindlessly repeating things like, this is the new normal, and they try to act as social justice warriors. These people, as a result of this, have a completely closed off mind, and that's always a very dangerous thing to the individual and everyone else. So my question is this. What the heck has happened to these poor people to have their minds become twisted in this way? I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. But this is what I have been recommending you guard your mind against. Let me give you another example. A symptom of this. A symptom that you are headed into this type of perception with this inflated ego to an unsustainable level. So imagine you are walking through the door of a grocery store, and you may have even had this experience. I've had this experience dozens of times. You're walking through the doorway of a grocery store, and someone else is nearing the entrance as you pass through the door. As you go through the doorway, they continue to walk right at you as if they don't even see you. They don't know you're there. And in some instances, they even run right into you before suddenly looking as if they've been slapped awake from some deep, deep slumber. They sometimes jump, they sometimes freeze, and you can actually see that their mind is waking up and trying to actually perceive that someone is occupying the space they're trying to occupy at that point in time. It isn't that these people are, are being, you know, they're, they're not bad people. It's as if they're trying to comprehend the situation as they were asleep before and suddenly they wake up and they're out walking around. You may have noticed the same thing driving on the road, on the highway, side streets. You may notice that people just kind of come right over at you or drive right at you, sometimes driving the wrong way on a one-way street and they just drive right at you eh? or they try to turn right into you as if they don't even see your vehicle. And then when you honk, they suddenly get jarred awake and then they start hitting their horn and they get really violent because they, they don't even know what's going on. When you find this happening, this is a result of being so stuck in your head that this shows to be a symptom that is going to then get worse if you don't do something about it and and take you into this, this third group type of perception that I've discussed. And the people that are doing this, you know, aren't bad people. They're not trying to to be mean or disrespectful or do anything wrong. It's like they're not even there. It's like they're in autopilot, like they're just going through life in autopilot, and they have no idea. And then every once in a while, they have to be jarred out of that sleep, out of that autopilot, and come back into focus in actual reality. And I feel bad about these people. That's why I'm not complaining. I'm pointing this out because I'm saying if this starts to happen to you, 
you better take some action because otherwise you're going to be headed towards that third group of twisted perception. This is what I see as the beginning stage of going into that extreme nature of the third type of perception. And what's very interesting is back in the 70s when I was a kid, this was very, very rare. This was very, very rare. We almost never saw this third type of perception. I don't remember seeing it in the 80s. I don't remember seeing it in the 90s. But here we are. And for the past three to five years, this has been growing exponentially. And yes, I am very concerned for every one of us. I worry about these people and I worry about you. I'm betting you know somebody who has done that, right? I bet you've had these type of experiences. So because this is not a normal prevailing type of of mentality, of perception for human beings, then why is it happening? Why now? Is it the result of people being conditioned over the years? Are these people susceptible to some form of brainwashing? Is this what happens when our brains become rewired from tech such as our cell phone? Is this what happens when we are subjected to more and more electromagnetic pollution and radiation? Is this the result of the mental decline of humanity according to uh, the sixth great mass extinction? I don't know. I don't have the answer to this. Maybe you have an idea, but I don't. Maybe it's a combination of those things. Who knows? But I'm putting this episode out in the hopes that you will monitor yourself and your loved ones and make sure it doesn't happen to you or them. So take a moment and see where you find yourself in those three types of perception. And if you find yourself in the second one, which many will... Maybe you're leaning towards the first one. Fantastic. Good for you. Keep doing what you're doing because it's working. But if not, if you find yourself in the second one, you find yourself, especially if you're starting to fall into that third one, what can we do? What is there anything that we can do to help ourselves? Is there a positive side to all of this, Robert? Well, I think so. And this is why I constantly stress the importance of mental and spiritual practices. It is imperative right now to engage in an authentic form of meditation or meditative practices. It is that simple. What can you do to keep your mind healthy? Meditate. Meditate. There it is. Couldn't be easier. That is the best thing you can do for yourself right now. And I don't mean making up some sort of meditation. I've given exact details on how to meditate free in this podcast. And it doesn't require any equipment. So the instruction is free. The practice is free. So there is no excuse not to get involved. I have pleaded with people for several years now to learn real meditation. I highly recommend that you do it right now. I'd like to thank all of you for tuning in and for continuing to support Expansion Mastery. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you so much. And with any luck, maybe this quarantine lockdown thing will be over very soon and we can get back to enjoying uh, life like we knew it before, engaging in all of the things that we enjoy outdoors and with one another. I, for one, am not going to be afraid to shake your hand or to sit next to you at a concert or to sit with you at a table and enjoy a meal, because those are just some of the joys of being a human being. But in the meantime, we are quarantined, and you've got nothing better to do than go visit me at www.expansionmastery.com, right? No excuses. You're just sitting there. Come on. Go there, you can read some interesting blog posts, you can check out some products, see what all I have going on on the website. Uh, Maybe go there and and leave a comment. I've been having some really nice comments from people uh, being left there lately, and I'd love to get those. I love to hear from you guys, I really do. And um, I, I just 
am so grateful every time that you take the time to sit down and actually leave a comment to me, explain one of your experiences and things. That's that's fantastic. I'd love to do that. So uh, hang in there. Stay strong, everybody. Keep going with your, your practices and make sure you're engaging in meditation. It's not difficult, but it can make all the difference and help you maintain a sensible perception. Stay strong, stay safe, take care.